Hello, and welcome to another episode of Metal Effort. My name's Nehemiah, and today we're taking a look at this piece of metal, the Holt Bladeworks Spectre. This has been an elusive beast. I finally wrangled my hands on this guy to get a review for you. Everybody is going crazy trying to get one of these things. This is the equivalent of knife crack. This is nuts. This is crazy. This is not my knife. This is on loan from somebody. I'm still looking for one to purchase. And uh, so in the meantime, because we never know when that will happen, I, I went ahead and took the offer up and decided to review this loaner. Uh, so I just want to let you know, it looks like it's in pretty good condition. Uh, it's been sharpened clearly after the fact, but other than that, I don't, I don't know if it's too far off from, you know, a new one. This is version two. Uh, so this has all the, the modern updates. So I think it's a, a good specimen and we'll, we'll get into it. First off, we're going to do our size comparison. We got our Spyderco PM2 and our Para 3, Para 3, Para 3. Oh, oh, oh that was close. And, uh, <laughs> whew, you're all, all sweating beads now. <laughs> all right. As you can see, it's a pretty big medium knife, I would say. It's definitely longer than the PM2. Let's get a quick measurement. We'll do a real life one here. It's uh, about three, three and a half ish. Yeah, three and a half ish to the to the corner. Uh, handle. We don't have a finger choil. Yeah, right about four inches of handle grip area. Uh, so good medium size should fit most people. Next thing we want to do is a weigh in. We're looking at three point six ounces. Let's say. Just barely over an ounce an inch. It's very close. Now let's get into our dent. The decent, the excellent, the nitpicks, and the terrible of this piece of metal. First off in the decent is the milling. Now, I think the milling on this knife is probably the most legendary. Uh, this, the Holtz have got a CNC machine. Actually, recently they just got their second CNC machine. And they have been putting it to excellent use. For this, we're gonna wanna kinda zoom in here a little bit. A very crazy detail that you could see kinda machined in to the handles. Very, very precise. Types of, you know, machine work that you could not get by hand. And I think this really, really, really shows what, you know, good CNC work can do. Uh, it's not very raised, like when you look at it from the side, it's not like these are really deep crevices. It's a very subtle milling on the handle scale. And it's something that I just, you're not going to see with, you know, a human hand. Uh, so when you're looking at it from the perspective of like manufacturing, some people prefer, you know, the, the idea of like handmade and, you know, that, that would be usually instead of, like, mass-produced without a care in the world where you're not going to have, like, precision, you know, consistent outcomes on, like, you know, mass-producing a ballpoint pen or whatever, a, a kid toy. And so when you think, oh, you know, the difference between a cheap kid toy, you know, made in a factory by the millions or a handcrafted toy – you know, that kind of invokes the idea of like quality and, you know, extreme care that would, went into that product. But when you're talking about the CNC work on this level, it, it's kind of come full circle to where now CNC machining, you know, when correctly programmed right and, and designed correctly and all that, you know, work that goes into making sure it's all set up right. That quality that you can get out of a CNC machine is way better than any human hand can do uh, without, you know, spending 10 years to make a single, you know, specter. So I think, you know, we kind of have to think counterintuitively here to really get a read on why, you know, just handmade doesn't guarantee that it's going to be perfect and vice versa, mach machined, produced product doesn't mean that it's not you know attention to detail this is immaculate 
the milling is precise, basically perfect. Next thing I want to talk about is the blade shape. This is very classic, just kind of a drop point uh, blade. And I've been liking blades like this. I have my good old fashioned hottie here, uh, which has a very similar blade shape. It's maybe not quite as pointy, but very, very similar. I mean, they're definitely, you know, blade shapes that are on par with each other. Uh, my Suhoi knife also has a blade shape similar to this. It's on loan. Uh, it's kind of boring, I guess you might say, you know, depending on who you ask. But it's hard to argue with just its extreme practicality. You can make piercing cuts, get into that clamshell really easy. Plenty of flats, plenty of belly. You know, this is good thin blade stock. Nothing fancy, you know. This isn't this isn't like a Grimsmo Norseman where they really went to town on something unique and different. This is just doing a, the simple, straightforward blade really, really, really well. Good sharpening choil, excellent drop point. This particular one has the stone black stone wash finish. I think they call it black wash. Uh, this is well done. I think it's, you know, as far as black wash goes, it's not my cup of tea. You know, if I ever got the opportunity to actually choose which Spectra I was buying, I would not choose one that had a stone, black stone wash on it. You know, if that was my only cho choice, I probably would take it at this point. But in an ideal world, <laughs> I would actually like to build one uh, and custom order it. I would not have this blade on. Next thing I want to talk about is the internal milling. And this is kind of, uh, let's see if we can get from the side. You can kind of see the milling on that side. On this side, at first it doesn't look like milling at all, but it's actually just a really deep crevice, one gigantic milling. So maybe do it like that, there you go. So it's almost like a hollow you know, scale where they're getting really, 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 really precise. You know, the handle lifts up here and so that means you can hollow it out more on the inside so you know if you <laughs> were a human trying to pull that off probably accidentally break through the side of the scale when you're you know gouging it out on the inside i think that that's really 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 needed because normally when you just have solid titanium which obviously is lighter than you know steels but we're talking about ion knives something with no speed holes just a giant slap of titanium on both sides normally wouldn't be this well balanced in the weight department but it is and that's how they pulled it off so good job next thing i want to talk about is the clip and the clip has kind of gone through a few iterations um over the last couple of years so i think the clip is basically perfect at this point very deep carry uh Hidden hardware, they're coming in from the scale side into the clip. It's chamfered like a boss. All the corners are chamfered, heavily chamfered, so that nothing is going to be poking you here. I can tell, you know, that chamfer looks like it's in response to <laughs> before it was chamfered. And uh, even these corners, I know that before they weren't quite this aggressively chamfered. Uh, I think this fixes the problem of like pokey ends, but it also adds a little bit more design flair to the clip that I think it was missing before. So both the aesthetic and a practical improvement, which I like. The clip or the backspacer is it's fairly simple. It's nothing crazy. It it is you know perfectly seamed. The ledges are just a hair underneath the scales as the the apex of each of these little crevices doesn't quite match up to the top of the scale but almost and so it's not going to be you know too aggressive in the hand provides a little bit of jimping i suppose but uh, i think it's more visual than anything i i like it, it matches the clip next thing i'd like to talk about is just the general design this is something I kind of went in depth on, like the Shamwari, where it was just clear that it was very, very, very intentionally made. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, when the blade is closed, you're looking at it, you know, perpendicularly. The blade is perfectly flush up until about this point, and then actually do, stoops down a little bit, which is good for like safety, so you're not 
snagging on the, the end of the blade or anything like that. But just that that simplistic, you know, there's zero blade showing when it's clo closed other than right here where it's obvious you're going to see it. That's something you don't actually see on knives very often. Um, you know, if you were to draw a picture of the Spidey Chef in your mind, you might not realize after looking at this knife just how much of the blade is actually sticking out like this. And so, you know, some knives are, are comically not well hidden blades when shut, like the baby machine. But then you also have ones that take the time to, you know, match it up, like the quiet carry. And so just, you know, maybe you don't actively notice it in your mind, you know, but your your subconscious did that there's something simplistic about these two designs that just automatically click into something that feels more right than these designs. Even though I like these knives tremendously, I haven't reviewed the baby, sh baby machine quite yet, but you know, this is probably one of my favorite knives. And even then you can kind of point out like the difference between really good design and then like amazing design in terms of just how compact the blade is to the handle, the length of the blade, uh, is very efficient. It's just something I want to kind of call out because it's not something that happens very often on your knives. It's more more often than not, you got a lot more blade hanging off the body than you know we're we're seeing here. So that's really impressive. I I'm really pretty pleased with the ergonomics of the knife. The handle cut out, you know the finger choil back here not a choil but your where your finger hangs out it, it goes in pretty aggressively deep into the knife and I, I do like that it gives you a little bit more control you want that pinch grip to be close together uh, it's pretty far back you know you don't have a sharp uh, finger choil on the blade obviously but it's not near as bad as most knives and because this is so deep I think if it was kind of out here, it would feel you know, a little awkward, like a fixed blade or something. Uh, but this lets you snuggle up right to where you want to be, and it, and it fits pretty good. It tapers just enough that, you know, it's, it's pretty comfortable. It's not, like, mind-blowing. I would say I still prefer the Konigarius Ergos over this. But obviously, you're you're paying for it because of the the awkward size and shape. It's just a lot bigger, <laughs> and ugh, visually kind of like what's going on. And so I think design wise, efficiency of size wise, the amount you're losing and ergonomics on this is more than made up for it with just the design and the pocketability of the knife. So you know, I'm going to call it out as an overall positive. Next couple things I want to mention are kind of small, but I'll talk about them. The jimping is extremely medium. <laughs> it's very rounded, widely spaced. It's not offensive. I don't know how much it's actually doing for me. And it could be that the, the jimping is a little bit more rounded than usual because of the black washing, possibly. Um, I just, you know, I, I think I'd just rather not have it at all or something that grabs a little bit more than this because it's not really doing much. It's in the piss or get off the pot territory. On the flipper tab, you also have like a very subtle two jimp thing here. Um, this is okay. I think the shape of the flipper tab is pretty hard to fall off, but I could see how, you know, maybe some people would have had issues with it. And that was something just to add a little bit of traction without making it aggressive or weird. I'm all right with this. I'm pretty I'm pretty okay with this. The jimping here, it's not bad. You know, it's, I don't want to say it's in the nitpick. But it's definitely not going to be in the excellent category. It's, it's just adequate, I suppose. And then one thing, I don't mention this very often, but I maybe should mention it more, off, more often when it's relevant. It's an internal stop pin. So when you're looking at the back of the blade... It's pretty clean, like there's not a lot of stuff going on in, inside the knife. And it, again, adds to the whole simple design motif that, that's kind of going on. Now let's talk about the excellent. First thing I want to talk about is the detent. 
The detent system is quite unique. So it's gonna be hard. Maybe I'll splash up some pages of the website, but basically it's not a traditional detent ball. It's more of like a detent shelf, I would say, like a little square pad almost. Uh, this creates very even opening when you're opening it where it's, you know, lots of, lots of, if you want, we'll, we'll talk about why it's not always the same, but there's a lot of like pressure on the detent system and then it snaps open pretty good. And then just not quite so much, you know, resistance on the close. Cause it's like a, it's like a one way, you know, door that that shelf is going to make it a lot easier to retract harder detent on the, on the open. So that's good. The really where the trick is, here and it's hard to see I hope you can see it it's not it's not what the big screw the big screw right here is just kind of screwing in the whole steel insert assembly but in between the lock bar and the scale you see another little tiny itty bitty hex screw down there so they give you a tool that can kind of squeeze in there and you can adjust the detent by sticking it in there and kind of fiddling around with it and so, for instance, when I got the knife, it was kind of a, a weak detent, weaker than I prefer. So it took like, you know, a quarter of a churn, not even a quarter of a churn, like an eighth of a churn, just a little minute adjustment. And then I basically had it perfect to what I personally want on the detent. So that, that was quick and easy. Don't even have to take the knife apart. It's an option. Uh, hasn't, hasn't come loose in the time that I've had the knife. I, I think this is an excellent, excellent system. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> you know, how we can bring this to other thing, other knives. Obviously, I think there's patent stuff pending, but, uh, you know, the innovation in the knife is there. It's not just taking a simple drop point, get a, get a CNC machine and just, oh, anybody and their mom can just crank out amazing knives. Like, they actually did their homework invented something new, added to the industry, and are in innovating. And so not only is it working exactly like they hoped, but it's also awesome that they were brave enough to try. Okay, so the next excellent thing is the action. And this is kind of the payoff for the detent system we just you know talked about. So we're going through it as the OCD, the open, the close, the disengage, in the wrong order. So let's talk about the open. There's only one way to open it. You can't pinch grip this open. It's flipper tab or bust. So I think, you know, the detent, you're going to get it exactly like you want. If you want a harder detent, you can, knowing that that's also going to affect a little bit the close. You know, this is pretty fall shutty. I got it right where the detent is very snappy, but it's still fall shutty. Not guillotine status. You know, I can loosen up the detent to get it to that, but then I, obviously I'm sacrificing my snappiness on the detent. You know, if I'm moving quickly enough, I could still make it work. So it's personal preference there. But basically, because you have infinite adjust on the detent system, this is going to be a 10 out of 10 on the opening because you can get exactly what you want. If you really, really, really want more than one way to open the knife, I think that's the only part of the opening that's kind of lacking. I do appreciate knives that have more than one way to open the knife that are equally good. But this is so amazing for the one way. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's not a. It's not a problem. Next thing is the disengagement. Uh, we'll we'll talk about that. So, you have a slightly heavier, you know, uh, milling on this scale than you do on this one. So you know, I can't see the other side of the scale from here, but I can on this side. And th that subtle difference is something I wish was on more knives because it really does make it a lot easier to get access to the lock bar. And this is. Pretty good. It's, I don't want to say no lock stick, but, but almost no lock stick. And the detent, you know, because it's not a ball, it's a shelf, is designed to pretty much get onto the tang of the blade right away. As soon as you, you know, move the lock bar and move the blade at all, it, it's ready to drop. There's not much of like fighting a detent ball to get onto the tang of the blade. It's just not happening here, which is awesome. So I think, eh. I don't have anything negative to say. I think this is a 10 out of 10 on disengage as well, which is crazy. And then finally close. And the close, like I said, I've got it to where it's one perfect jostle. 
I could get it to, you know, half a jostle or 0.75 jostle, but I don't want to do that because it would affect my detent a little bit too much. I'm not really a soft detent kind of guy. If, if it was a situation where I had to choose between good detent or the closing, you know, friction that I want, then, you know, that would be already better than most knives because at least I can pick my poison. What I really like about this knife is that I was able to adjust it and get it exactly how I want for both the disengage and the close, or rather the opening and the close. If, you know, there's a possibility that, sure, I can move things around, but the perfect zone of detent to drop shuttiness could never actually reach the same point, you know? And so in this case, I was. Now, if you're really, really, you know, favoring like softer detents and you don't like like fall shuttiness, then you're going to be really frustrated because you can't have both. <laughs> and if you like a really, 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 really hard detent and you want it to fall shut, you're also going to be frustrated. Lucky for me, I like both right in the middle, and so the system was able to allow me to do that. I think there's a little tiny bit of wiggle room, you know, give, give or take like maybe five to 10% in any direction on how hard you want the detent to be or how easy you want the blade to fall, you know, from my, what I perceive to be the middle, then, you know, you, you might not have to be so precisely picky about it as I am to still meet your goal but just to kind of paint the picture of what what to expect and what you can achieve with this system. I do have a couple of nitpicks here <laughs> so first nitpick is the pivots are free spinning which is kind of annoying not a big deal I mean at least it's not like free spinning without a, a hex <laughs> because my shear going off is like that and it makes me want to throw it through a window so this could be better, but whatever. Second thing also has to do with the pivot. They're kind of raised a little bit more than I would prefer. I think that they could flatten these out just a little bit. They have different designs, but all three of them look like they're going to be just as thick. Minor, minor detail. You know, if you were going to actually use your Spectre, which I would love to have to and be able to use one, uh, I would imagine your your pivots would get scratched up because they're just taking a lot more punishment in your pocket than the rest of the knife. I'm imagining that. I don't actually have cold hard proof, but still. Aesthetically, at the very least, I don't like it. It could be practically. I don't like it as well. Next thing, and this is, I guess, time specific, but these suckers are hard to get. These are like the unicorn that <laughs> you just cannot get your hands around. It's really, 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 really frustrating to, you know, want something and not be able to get it. Um, so I don't, I don't know what to really make of that. You know, over time, I think it'll be easier to get them. Hopefully, you know, they have a second CNC machine, but I think that's going to be used to make another knife, a different model. So I don't know if the production of the actual Spectres would go up. It's possible if they come out with a new knife, they want to have both CNC machines making the new ones. So it's possible the Spectre is actually harder to get in the near future. I don't know. This is pure speculation. They haven't talked to me. Another thing that I'll put in the nitpick, but could be terrible. I don't know is the price and so the retail price at first i like wrote it down in my my decent section because most models are in the 500 to 600 dollar range uh they have like preceded editions that go up to you know over a thousand but most of the ones that they have on like their maker's choice are in the 500 to 700 maybe usually five or six hundred and that's really good for this knife you know and 390 blade all the awesome things i've talked about it's worth more than that because whoever gets to buy one at that price, if you could pry it out of their hands, you, you would have to offer at least double usually what they got the knife for to even tempt them into selling you the knife. And so, you know, that that's good for the Holtz, I guess. <laughs> it's, they could easily justify just arbitrarily raising their prices like the Grimsmore brothers did. Um, you know, I... 
I believe in free market. But it just means that you're kind of left in this awkward spot where I can't say, oh, yeah, this is great because it's an awesome price. When, like, in reality, like, for you to get the knife outside of, like, winning the lottery, you're going to have to pay a lot more than that. And it's not even, like, really set in stone. It's very ambiguous on how much you would actually end up paying for it, which is also a little bit more frustrating. So, I don't know. It's not really the Holt's fault. <laughs> That's more of just their fault for making a really good product. I, I don't know what to do with that, but it's in the nitpick. Last nitpick is the little lion's mane. I don't know I don't know if it's uh, the black wash with this particular you know, logo or if it looks this bad on normal blades, but I really do not like the finish. It looks like somebody drew it on with a pencil, like how it's kind of like glossy. It just looks like lead. You know, somebody drew on my blade. I'm just like, oh man, I want to get that off. Um, I don't know, like, I get it, lines are cool, I guess, but it's just so goopy and cranny and uh, I don't want to get too much into it, just, I don't like it, that's all you need to know. I don't have anything in the terrible section, obviously, um, outside of just being frustrated that I don't, I don't own one and I have the money like set aside for the last like seven months to, to buy a Spectre and I still haven't found one. Uh, that's my personal issue, not yours. Doing this review is kind of silly. Like who needs to be convinced to get a Spectre? Like if anything, I should make a, a propaganda piece that's saying how terrible these are. I'm not going to do that, but uh, I don't know. I should be excited. If this was my actual knife, I would be like 10 times more excited right now. And I'm actually kind of annoyed that <laughs> a person kindly lent me a knife that, you know, is worth a lot. And he's probably got some anxiety over not having. But I'm just annoyed that he has three. <laughs> it's like, so, I don't know what that means. Like, I'm, a, I'm a selfish douchebag, I suppose. But I'll send it back to him tomorrow. Uh yeah, I mean, what 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 else is there to say about the whole Spectre? It's awesome. If you get get one, congratulations. It, it's great. I'm looking forward to the new knife that the the Holtz make. Uh, at this rate, I'll probably get that knife before I get a Spectre. So who knows? I hope this was helpful to you. I'll see you in the next video. Adios. Now let's get into our dent, the decent, the nitpick, nope.